there is an opportunity to recognize uh, op things before they are recognizable. And those who do are benefiting um, tremendously. Government organizations, no differently, have tremendous opportunity because if data is the new oil, uh, guess who has the most of it? Government, right? I mean, government has data on economic, healthcare, education, demographics, internal operations, so on and so forth. And now, with massive compute power, uh, algorithmic advancements, as well as cheap storage, uh, it's a perfect storm where you can track every single transaction, every single interaction, and benefit from that. And when an agency is in that sort of early stage with a particular data set, or in general, um, early stage of the curve, there's kind of a moment you know, when they're like, okay, well, why did we invest all of that energy? What is the payoff of having done that? Um, you know, as much as we're encouraging agencies to make their data open. So we could then kind of come in and say, well, actually, the, the opportunity that you have now is that anybody can work with that data and help you to generate value with it. It's not just on you, the housing company, Redfin. Um, they built an incredible tool to sort of utilize this incredible data that the Census Bureau has called in, in the Local Employment Dynamics Program. So it's very close to point level, basically block level data on nearly every job in the country. So we, you know, have the Census Bureau has built some great tools to, to make that data available and help people use it. But when we made it available to even, even more people, um, to companies, and said, what can you do with this data? How can you leverage it, maybe combining your own proprietary data or thinking about a different kind of use case that we wouldn't have thought of? And they built this incredible thing called Opportunity Score, which similar to Walk Score, kind of sits on their platform as a score from zero to 100 that measures how accessible a particular um, how a location of a, of a home is to jobs without access to a car. So um, really incredible insights that people can generate from that kind of data in terms of, you know, for individual families, for transit planners, for regional planners. Um, and that's something that we kind of wouldn't have thought to do on our own. So this has kind of evolved as a general model for thinking about how do we get there faster and sort of the punchline is it's not something that we should or could do on our own and should actively be engaging developers, data scientists, engineers from outside of government. The viewpoint of the agency from a data standpoint, where we stand, what are we doing with the data that we collect, how are we collecting it, and how are we using it? Then the second step would be the idea of how can we run analytics on top of the data to drive information or decision making. And finally, anybody who knows, uh, anybody who works with the executive leadership knows that, the just an algorithm won't help them to make the decision. So the next pillar is trying to understand how we use visualization as a key to help the people who has two seconds to make a decision to say, this is what we do with analytics and this is how we are going to make the decision based on this analysis. When we talk about the research, one of the pieces is we do a lot of regulations and we do a lot of these um, rule making based on a thorough research. So scientists, what they have, what they come to me and talk about is, need for a successful compute platform that is scalable. So what we are doing at the agency on that, that aspect is we have uh, platforms built in cloud, which is leveraging uh, platform as a service and Docker. So I'm trying to give some technology and the business at the same time. So we are using Docker-based deployment that will help us to do scalable compute so that the scientists can deploy their models on the cloud so that they can do more analysis on the data set. One area that I have seen uh, increase in usage of the data is the idea of real-time sensors. So what we have done is when I joined the agency, we did this smart city air sensor challenge. And we have two winners. One is the Baltimore city, and another one is West Lafayette. And what they are doing in each of these cities is the challenge is focused on deploying 300 air qu low quality air sensors and try to understand how do you manage that to drive decisions. So that's, that's almost like is it a future or is it a current? I think a lot of cities are becoming smart cities, so I would say that it's current. And we are driving those kind of thinking within the agency to see how we can use third-party data or data that is generated from non-traditional sources for looking at how can we be effective in our mission. The government as an entity does not holistically look, holistically look at its data. That is very true. Uh, 
the government as an entity doesn't have access to operational data across the board. That's also true too often on an agency level. Oftentimes agency leadership don't have access to, to operational or programmatic data that they can use uh, to deliver analytical insights. When I was a congressional staffer about eight years ago at the House Oversight Committee, we set out to tackle this at least in the area of government management and spending and we came up with what's called the Data Act. The Data Act was enacted in 2014 and it requires the federal government as a whole, as an entire entity, to adopt a consistent data structure for spending. Up until the Data Act, there were at least three different categories of spending information that were reported in silos. You had your financial statements and financial account balances, you had your budget information, and you had your grant and contract award details. The Data Act requires every agency to put all that together in one consolidated data set and to report it. Next week, we are going to hit the four, week, the four year anniversary of the Data Act. Every agency uh, will report another quarter of spending information in those three categories, all in a consistent data structure. That reporting has gone on for a year. It began last year in 2017. And as a result, for the first time in history, we have a single data set government-wide covering all of the information in these, at least these three categories about spending. Now, why does that matter for analytics? It means that for the first time, a CFO can take a particular congressional appropriation and automatically see which expenditure accounts that appropriation is funding, and then automatically visualize, without any data calls, automatically visualize every grant and every contract being funded from those particular accounts sourced from that particular appropriation. That is a task that used to require individual queries to every program management office and might often be inc incorrect or inaccurate even after that. That is a huge leap forward for analytics-driven management. One of the challenges that we have is we get data from different entities. State has to give us information. Regulator entities has to submit information. And there is this always this conversation about, you know, I don't know if you gave me the right data. When we do the analytics, we have to go back to the states to say that, okay, is this data right? Right? Is there a, is there a data quality issue? So I think the whole idea of distributed ledger technologies might be a solution for the federal government to start increasing the trust among the entities that is submitting the data. So I think that will be one future state that I see EPA should look at from, um, from making the regulation much more transparent so that the data that the states hold, the, uh, the Amazon or Walmart holds or we hold is the same thing. That will help us to drive the analytics because nobody can come back to us and say that, okay, this, this analytics or this decision that does not make any sense because the data that you have is not the data that we have, right? So the whole trust issue and the, the, the equalization of the data across all these entities will go away the moment we have a distributed ledger technology. So the question is, how can we leverage the more data to, do, to use these new techniques coming out of the Silicon Valley? For example, IOTs might be one way where we can collect large volume data set. Another one is the whole idea of can we use remote sensing satellite images to drive decisions.